ಕರುಣಾರ್ಣವಮಾಯ್ ಕರುದಗ್ಗತಿ ನಲ್ಗು ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ನೋಸ್ ಓರ್ ಶುಡ್ ನೋ ದಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟು ಡೆತ್ ಬಟ್ ವಟ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಓರ್ ಗ್ರೇಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೆತ್ ಡೆತ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿಫೈಡ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಅಕೋರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದೇರ್ ಕಾಸ್ and especially according to their destination for example it's stated in bhagavad gita whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body that state he will attain without fail so you probably heard that your whole life passes before your mental eyes at the time of death and this is true well what's happening What's happening is that all the impressions, all the memories, all the activities and the results of this entire lifetime are being rewound, kind of like rewinding a tape recorder, and compressed, just like compressing a, a video or something like that. And this becomes the seed of the next life. these become the vasanas the mental tendencies that rule the next body just like the habits tastes and inclinations that we have today are from our previous lives so what this means is that the thoughts or the state of being that we remember at the time of death is simply the summation of the states of being we had during this life let that sink in for a minute <laughs> because we are not in control of our mind at the time of death only a very very rare person can keep the mind under control when leaving the body so what usually happens is one experiences this avalanche of thoughts actually of memories of the present lifetime as they are rewound and compressed into the seed of the next life so that means the habits the mental states the states of consciousness the desires activities words and so forth that we create during this life during this whole lifetime the aggregate of all these becomes the contents of the mind at the time of death this is why it's said a saint in truth is a saint in youth because one who is born into an exalted state of consciousness has worked on himself intensively in the lives before So this is an authentic saint. This is a, a real transcendental person. We don't get to see too many of them because most of them go to the higher planets. How is that? Well, here's some more another quote from Bhagavad Gita. When one dies in the mode of goodness, he attains to the pure higher planets. When one dies in the mode of passion, he takes birth among those engaged in fruitive activities and when he dies in the mode of ignorance he takes birth in the animal kingdom so what this means that if one lives a pious and pure and clean life with plenty of pious activities good karma punya this means worship prayer giving in charity performing sadhana chanting mantras meditation and study of the vedas then he goes higher on the scale of being why because as we discussed in the last quote the mind is full of pious thoughts 
It's <clears throat> full of beauty and renunciation. And these are the qualities that lead to higher births in the heavenly planetary systems and even above. But those whose minds are always filled with materialistic thoughts, doing this, going there, huh? acquiring this and that, and competition and fighting and all this stuff, they come back again to this earth planet. Now, do you really want to come back to this earth planet? I sure don't. And those whose minds are full of intoxication and meat eating, gambling, all kinds of sinful activities, violence and murder and all of this stuff, hate, huh? and also anxiety. These people go down into the animal kingdom in their next birth. Why? Because their mind is full of impure things. This is why the, all the scriptures of every religion in the world advise us to be good people, to think good thoughts, to be happy and kind and gentle to others, and mainly to worship God, because all these other qualities are rooted in that uh, devotion to the Supreme, in whatever form or shape or quality we conceive the, uh, the absolute. Huh? One must fill one's life with thoughts and activities in relation to that. That is yoga. Yoga means joining, it comes from the word yukt. In fact, there's even a nice verse, yogo yukta prasanatma, naso chati nakangshati. That means one whose mind is joined in yoga with the Supreme never laments or desires to have anything because he is so satisfied by means of this yoga, this meditation, this joining of the, the individual with the self, the real self, that he neither laments because of losing or not having anything, or, nor does he desire to have anything in this world. All his needs are supplied basically automatically by his good karma, by his pious deeds, and by his faith in the real power that runs this world, which is, of course, God. So that's a threefold classification. There's also a five-fold classification of deaths. And this is based on the state of consciousness. Now, for the last two years, I'm going to put up this chart here. We have been teaching these five states of consciousness based on the degree of self-realization or yoga that one has attained. Now, we're not going to talk about the pashu, the animals, uh, the animals walking on two legs, <laughs> because they're off the bottom of the chart. They don't even count. <laughs> they're not in yoga. They're v-yoga, v-yogis. So they go down into the animal kingdom. They're in the mode of ignorance, and there's like not even in the game. But one becomes a human being when one starts to worship God. And the first stage of this worship is the Dvaitavada. Dvaitavada means the dualistic view. I am one thing, God is something else. <laughs> God is something outside of me, and I try to approach and worship God through religion and the scriptures like that. So this is called the Dvaitavada, and the activities or sadhana for that stage is karma yoga. The next stage is called Vishishta Advaitavada, which means qualified monism or qualified Advaita, conditioned by, still by the feeling that one is an individual, a separate being, but knowing from having uh, studied the scriptures in the previous stage that the ultimate goal of spiritual life is realization of oneself as Brahman or God. 
And this is characterized by practice of bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga leads to higher destinations because one worships the personality or the form of the Godhead as it appears in different higher worlds. And at the end of bhakti yoga, one goes to the object of his worship. The next stage, which happens automatically to one who perfects bhakti, is the vivartavada. Vivartavada is the stage of meditation. In this stage, one gives off all external practices and rituals and principles and stuff like that, and simply meditates within on the source, on the self, on Brahman. And this was the type of practice discussed by Buddha. It's called Raja Yoga, Yoga of Kings. So by this Raja Yoga, one realizes that I am Brahman, Aham Brahmasmi. And this leads beyond heaven to the planets of the sages, Maharlok, Tapolok, Jnanalok, Satyalok, Brahmalok. Huh? These are the real prime destinations in spiritual life. And then finally, for one who has perfected meditation and who is fully self-realized, the Ajatavada. Ajatavada is the state where one sees that the material world was never born. In fact, one doesn't even see the material world. One only sees the different appearances of Brahman the different reflections of Brahman in various names and forms. So not that he doesn't perceive the material world or what we call the material world, but he sees what we call the material world as pure spirit, pure consciousness, like that. Now this one is not reborn. There is no destination after death for this one. He goes and merges with Brahman. Actually, he realizes his identity with Brahman in this very life and becomes what is called a Jivan Mukta, one who is liberated even in the present body. So the type of experience of death also is influenced by the quality of consciousness. Those who are in the mode of ignorance, for example, usually die from some lingering chronic disease. Uh, their death is very messy and nasty with all kinds of horrible symptoms. Uh, and uh, usually there's some sinful activities involved in their death and like that. Or maybe they commit suicide. And this leads down to the animal kingdom. Then those who die in the mode of passion well, we see those all the time in the hospitals huh, with all kinds of tubes and medicine and doctors and this and that, spending lots and lots of money to just squeeze out a few more days, clinging to the body like it's, you know, something precious. Huh? But it doesn't really help. They still have to die. But because of their struggle, they come back as a human being again, have to go through it all over again. And then there are those in the mode of goodness. And I wanted to tell this story, even though I'm almost out of time. But I want to tell this story of my sannyas guru, who died a little over a year ago. And I happened to be present at his, the time of his death. Now, I have a special ability that when I have a deep connection, an energetic connection with someone, when they leave their body, I can go with them or I can even help them to go to a higher destination. So I happened to be present at the time my guru left his body. And I was able to follow him a long, long, long ways up, 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 up to a higher destination. And then I lost him. Huh? <laughs> it, like he disappeared, I couldn't find him. And his death was so beautiful. There was no struggle, no resistance, no death rattle, no, uh, you know, bad feelings or negative emotions. 
just complete calm acceptance and silent knowingness because he was already enlightened. He was already in Ajatavada. Uh, and he had helped many people during his life. He had so much good karma. So when he died, it was easy. Uh, there was no struggle. There was no trauma. There was, it was like, it was beautiful. You know, he, he looked into our eyes and then he went into meditation. And after about a half an hour, he took one big deep breath and let it out. And that was it. He was gone. And I was holding his hand and holding his head. And I could feel him leave through the top of the head. So this is the mark of an enlightened being. When they die, they die easily and they pass out through the Brahma Randra, this tiny hole at the top of the skull, into the Sahasrara. So we can explain this in terms of the five bodies. We can explain it in terms of the different states of consciousness or in terms of the chakras or in terms of karma or in terms of one's state of, re of uh, self-realization. But however we explain it, it has the same meaning. And the meaning is that to have a good death and especially to earn a, an exalted state or, or destination after death, one has to begin practicing self-realization now. The best time to start meditation and, and puja and all of that is when you're a young child. And the next best time is right now, today, and <laughs> take a vow. I'm going to take care of myself so that I'm not afraid at the time of death, so that I can leave this body in peace, so that I can feel grateful that I'm being relieved of the burden of this bag of meat and bones, and that I'm going to some higher destination in the next life. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti.